I'm back. So I'm doing a video on Bodicini. Bodicini is a double bass concerto in A minor or B minor. If you don't understand that, you can watch earlier. Um, but I'm going to jump right into the music. So we already talked about this dynamic. We have this piano, and then we have two dots. And then this addition is a sarapo. So really... So these two dots, I don't see them, they aren't for me. I think that's a kind of, a, unfortunately, a rookie mistake. I'm sorry, there's, you can hear the sirens, because I'm next to a major road, and I'm sorry. And if I were a real YouTuber, I would probably wait until it passed and make another tape. But I'm not going to do that, because I don't have time. So, a lot of uh, players think that dots always mean short notes, so that this... <laughs> I, I laugh because I think that sounds funny. Um, the dots shouldn't be... Dots don't always mean short. Sometimes they just mean, how can I say, distinct or marked in some way, but not necessarily short. So the way I just do it, so I do it in, in, the, in the context of this warm E that I start. That's one. Two. Now, I'm going, the two being, I'm going to this, um, uh, I think, that is that, that to me is the goal. The one thing that drives me nuts, y'all, really being able to differentiate these court, these triplets, um, being very distinctive about that 16th note because it actually makes the, to me the phrase more expressive. Di da da di 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 ya da di ya da. It's uh, it's something that can be a little more profound. The verse is di ya da da di ya da, and then it becomes a drinking song. Anyway, uh, moving on, and we have this. Uh, uh, I like to put these before, mm, and then same. So that I use the harmonic. What your bass feels. It actually feels pretty good on this bass. This is Riley. Uh, and there, to me, it works. This. If you can get a good, nice sound, there's nothing wrong with going. Uh, uh, I mean, that's perfectly fine. Or. Uh, maybe one day I'll play it that way. But I haven't played this piece in a really long time, so I'm gonna go with what I know. If it sounds bad, tell me in the comments. I could use some lessons on lots of things. So, uh, uh. Now you, this, you have this triplets. Again, you can play the triplets very square, and I mentioned this previously. You can go. That's what he wrote. But you can be a little more expressive by, about it by doing a little rubato, holding a D and going to the C. And honestly, it works because it's just a written out appoggiatura, y'all. Maybe I should do just a whole video on just appoggiaturas. But if you need a refresher, this D is a dissonance, dissonant against the That's our resolution. So appoggiaturas mean we land. Uh, I'll play it as if it were only just the appoggiatura. Um, Now, if I add the other notes, those are just decoration, y'all. They're the decorative notes. Like a Christmas tree. The holidays are quickly approaching. It's like a Christmas tree. Decoration. That's all it is. So, uh, uh, and then that actually makes sense. Y'all, that's how music works. Anyway. I'll keep going. Now this, I actually like a little bit of the, the, the goopiness of the slide there, because I think it's very vocal and expressive. So I'm already singing, ta -ta I'm going to go, ta -ha -ha. I mean, you could do it, but I think it sounds a little boring. So, and are, these, are there more dots here? Yes, there are. So again, they're really, how Robinson likes to call them, palletized. <laughs> Pal like a, just something that's more finessed. And notice I didn't do the same slide. That's y'all. Because if you go, 
<laughs> just starts to sound a little predictable. You might have to pass out the dramamine for your audience because they'll get like, whoa. If there's too much sliding all over the place, so you kind of want to pick your um, <laughs> pick pick the points where you want to be super expressive, and then and then maybe do something a little cleaner. Because um, then if it's all the same thing, the the expressivity becomes almost yeah, it loses its its luster, its punch. So uh, do it again. It's been a long time, and I'm trying to read the music, which I haven't done for this piece in a long time. <laughs> and that's another, I t uh, um, it's another positura. And it resolves down to the, because that's the key we're in, this E, and it goes back to the A minor. Uh, so it's, and same thing with these triplets. You could go, I go, uh, it's not my Boeing, so what do I do? Uh, yeah. to separate the, um, um, oh, and it might be written there, it's just really hard to see because all the crumples in my paper, if you didn't see the first one, this is the score I'm reading off of. Yes, it's a little old, it's a long story, if you want to hear the story, um, you can see the first half. Okay, so, uh, so I'll say you could play it straight, that was my whole point, so. Or it could be more expressive with this. You notice I still land up with a metronome. That's what rubato is. Rubato does not mean play any rhythm that you want. It means playing with the time in a smart, educated way. That still aligns with the overall rhythm of the piece. Because if it doesn't align, y'all, then we have no rhythm. And if we have no rhythm, then we have no music. That's how it works. So it's a game, and it's it's. These are the things I've discussed before. You have to know these things uh, in the context of what's going on. Again, the study of the the harmony um, and how it works, and what are the note functions in the piece, so you can then make these informed, educated decisions, so that the music actually works. I'll do that again in context. Uh, because of the, the, we're going to a major key. Um, and then we end with hope. Long note is an opportunity. Here, long note. So let's talk about this a little bit. Um, if I, so I thought it's, it's not a recap, but it's the next sentence. If this, if the body singing concerto is a paragraph, the first sentence ends with the, and then the second sentence ends with, uh, um, and begins with uh, where we started. So I try to like, bring that same color back. Uh, and actually, something that's I know I felt myself doing in a slower tempo. The rhythm is is dantiada, dantiada. This it's just something like. So the grace notes should come before. Hope that makes sense. No, it does. Uh. Long note is an opportunity. When I mean a long note is an opportunity, I'm not just gonna go. But <laughs> yeah, that was really, really cheesy. But I hope it proved the point. You see that the G actually sounds more alive as I play it. Um, that's hard. 
because I do this kind of expressive thing. I'm trying to be expressive, y'all. I do this. So I do a little slide there. Now I'm gonna get a little wiggle on that D. So I can get that. Sevens, y'all, are always really super sweet. So if I can get that to work, it'll make me happy. Lean on that note because in the accompaniment, in the piano or in the orchestra, there is a 6-4 chord there. A 6-4 chord is a cadential chord, and the cadential chord is probably the most tension um, in any kind of cadence. And so, uh, uh, so your 6-4 goes to your 5-7, and this is your 5-7, and that's your new one, because now we're in the key of C. I know it's a little complicated sounding, but it actually doesn't make sense. If you listen to, again, you should always have the orchestra part in your head if you're learning a concerto. If you're learning a concerto, you can't just learn the bass part because the bass part is only one small facet or the solo part, whatever instrument you play. You might play the piccolo or the kazoo or the, I don't know, the sousaphone. <laughs> whatever you're playing, there's always context. So you want to know how it fits in the music, otherwise it will make your decision, your musical decisions may not make actual sense. So that this is just really, really important. These are the things I think about when playing a piece like this. So let me do this one more time. Uh, so let's talk about that because that's also complicated. That's uh, 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 this. I, I actually try to put the bow, I will try to do it slowly, so from the string, you have to have that kind of freedom with your hand. If you, again, you notice I, how fast, I, how fast I can throw that weight down, it's throwing weight down. I'm not, because that's really hard to press, so I just, and that, this is one of the things that uh, uh, with continued practice, we can become more relaxed when we play. It's so funny, someone keeps, well many people ask, they see me pulling the string. I'm thinking about when I play the bass, I'm dropping the weight of my arm on the string, and I can do a whole nother video on this too. I'm dropping my weight, so I'm just pulling down. So when I, I can do this, it's not pressing, because if you press, pressing requires tension. So I don't, I don't like to press, I like to throw. And it's that little quick, so, another appoggiatura? Yes, because it, uh, is that really, it's not, it's a, well, it's a cadence, it's not really a appoggiatura, but it is kind of a appoggiatura. No, it's not really a appoggiatura. Now, now I'm getting, I'm questioning my own, but it's just a cadence. So in a cadence you have, Re, do. We always lean on the dissonance, which is the 5-7 chord. <laughs> this is your 5, it's five six, uh, which would be G major, G7. That's your 7. G, and then, the, what does the 7 always do? It resolves down by step, so... And then... Because that seventh becomes the third of your new key. Okay, enough theory. I know that's probably driving some of you nuts, but y'all, there's a method to the madness, and when, again, when you learn the madness, it makes playing easier. Uh. Example, you could hear that I played with the time, 
But the time moved on and I always lined up with it at all the critical points. This is in this way, the pianist or the orchestra that's accompanying can actually still follow you and trust that you will land in the right place. And uh, if you get a good accompanist, it could actually be a great ride because you can play off each other and you start making music together and it's like chamber music and it's like good time, yes. So I am going to, I haven't even listened to myself because it could sound really bad. And I am a big advocate of recording and listening to oneself because sometimes when we're playing on our own, we can be so involved in what we're doing, we can't actually hear the output of what's coming out. And then from that, we can start to analyze what we need to do to make things better. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I listened and I learned. <laughs> uh, yeah, for the most part, it's fine. It's all simple stuff. Making sure I'm connecting phrases, making sure even when I am doing expressive things like that. I think that worked. That may sound pretty good. <laughs> Barasini. So let me, uh, I, might, I mean, I have like literally like three minutes to get this done. So I'm going to see what happens. Wow, you made it to the end of another one of my videos. Congratulations. If you aren't a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and you can even hit that bell icon so you get an alert every single time I upload a video to YouTube. I'm also on TikTok and Instagram as Weathercleft. And of course you found me here on YouTube. If you have content suggestions, if you don't want to hear a little bit more about some things, just write them in the comments. I will try to answer them as much as I can and I'll try to make the videos as I am able <laughs> uh, to do that. But thanks so much for following me. This has been a great journey. I started this about, um, uh, well, just back in mid-August and uh, I've gotten a few followers now so <laughs> and a few subscribers. So I hope you've been enjoying the videos and I look forward to making more for you in the future.